Hello, my fellow brothers and sisters. Peace be with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Ben, and I welcome you to the Restored Ephraim Publications channel. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about some thoughts I've been having. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't made uh, too many videos in the in the past week. I was having uh, some problems, but uh, it's better now, and so I, I thought I would, I would put out a video today. Uh, they also made me the Elders Quorum Secretary, uh, and and so that was one of the things I was I was dealing with. Uh, before we get into today's topic, if you haven't done so already, I hope you'll consider checking out either or both of uh, my latest uh, Bible translations, uh, the book of Isaiah and the book of Genesis. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video on where you can uh, get a copy of, of one or both of these books. And there's some other interesting stuff in the, in the links below. Now, I've been thinking a lot about being one lately. Uh, Jesus Christ says in the Doctrine and Covenants section uh, 38, verse 27, uh, Behold, this I have given unto you as a parable, and it is even as I am. I say unto you, Be one. And if ye are not one, ye are not mine. So, uh, what exactly does that mean to be one? Because the Lord says, if, if we're not one, then, then we're not uh, his. Um, does, does being one mean that we're all identical uh, no that does that's not what it means at all we're, we're, we're all different uh, we all have different abilities and gifts and all of us are necessary to build a uh, uh, the house of God uh, is the world one uh, no even with all their their learning and ideas, they can't be one. They're, they are filled with conflict and will always have conflict because they are led by Satan. And so, uh, as I have uh, studied uh, lots of, of things uh, in the early church, I, I've, I, I see that uh, they, they were trying to create a separate society uh, from uh, the American society because they, or at, at least the leaders of the church knew that American society already had become wicked and so they were, out of necessity, they, they knew that they had to separate themselves culturally from the Americans uh, if they were to avoid the, the destructions that would come upon Babylon. Um, this is a quote from Brigham Young that I really like. Or, I'm sorry, uh, it, 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 it comes from Brigham Young, but it's a... It's a written by uh, a one Mosiah Hancock in his journal uh, about an experience he had with Brigham Young. And so uh, let me uh, uh, read this. It says, uh, The president, Brigham Young, stopped with us. He sat at the head of the table and had me sit down at his right. The president, when everything was ready, asked a blessing then all began to eat. He asked for some buttermilk, then crumbled some bread in it and began to eat. He conversed freely on the situation of the saints in the mountains and said that he dreaded the time when the saints would become popular with the world, for he had seen in sorrow in a dream or in dreams this people clothed in the fashions of Babylon 
and drinking in the spirit of Babylon until one could hardly tell a saint from a black leg. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the term black leg means, but I'm assuming it means someone who's, who's not a member or is the opposite of a saint. Um, continuing on, it says, And he felt like shouting, To your tents, O Israel, because it was the only thing that could keep this people pure. Many of this people, for the sake of riches and popularity, will sell themselves for that which will canker their souls and lead them down to misery and despair. It would be better for them to dwell in wigwams among the Indians than to dwell with the Gentiles and miss the glories which God wishes them to obtain. I wish my families would see the point and come forth before it is too late. For, oh, I can see the tendency in my families to hug the moth-eaten customs of Babylon to their bosoms. This is far more hurtful to them than the deadly viper, for the poisons of the viper can be healed by the power of God, but the customs of Babylon will be hard to get rid of. And then uh, there's another quote that I like. This uh, comes from Joseph F. Smith in the Journal of Discourses, uh, volume 11, page 310. It says, uh, There was a time when we could walk up and down the streets and tell by the very countenances of men whether they were Latter-day Saints or not. But can you do it now? You cannot unless you have greater discernment and more of the spirit and power of God than I have. Why? because many are trying as hard as they can to transform themselves into the very shape, character, and spirit of the world. Elders in Israel, young men, mothers, and daughters in Israel are conforming to the world's fashions until their very countenances indicate its spirit and character. This course is to the shame and disgrace of those who are so unwise. And so... That was just talking about uh, one of the aspects. Uh, that and, and that aspect was referring to fashion, clothing fashion. Uh, this is why I started uh, changing the style of clothing uh, that that I wear, so that I'm not wearing what the world wears, and instead I've developed my own cultural fashion. Uh, so that I'm not following after the spirit of Babylon. But it's not just in in in, uh, in fashion, and this is is the question. Uh, uh, just because we look like we're one in in culture, are we one in 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 culture uh, in the Lord's way, or are we following? the culture of Babylon. Uh, clothing is a big indicator of this, but it's not just clothing. Um, if you if you wear the clothing of Babylon, if you eat the food of Babylon, if you send your children to Babylonian schools, if you uh, study the, the Babylonian uh, sciences, if you uh, partake in Babylonian entertainment if you uh, are healed using the the pharmacon or sorcery of of Babylon are you part of the culture of the Lord or are you the culture and are you one with Babylon and so that's that's the question I'm asking everybody to think about and to pray about. And I, for years, I've been trying to to uh, create my own culture, and unfortunately, I, I've never been able to to spread it. I I I've never been able to convince people that uh, what I am doing is better. And I, I know part of the problem is that people love ease and pleasure. 
And so anything that would take away from being from their their ease and their pleasure uh, that will always cause people to not do things. Uh, one thing I think is a misunderstanding is that people might think that uh, the whole church has to to do everything the, the same and, and though that of course would be a good idea but uh, but uh, uh, what's uh, the real real intent is that it says that the, uh, the the woman or the church gives birth to a son or which is the kingdom of God and uh, what and and what that is showing is that um, uh, e- e- even though we should all be one in, in doctrine, um, each ward in itself is supposed to be uh, its own united order. Uh, the united order is, is, is the system that the, the Lord wants us uh, to, uh, to, to, to build in order to get out of the Babylonian system. Now, if if we're all living in one place, then it's it's easy to have one culture. But when we're scattered all over the place, then uh, we should th- uh, first seek within our own ward to to establish a united order and to be one there. And uh, and, and that means things can be done differently in from ward to ward on certain matters. And it, it's really up to the people living in, in, in each ward as, uh, they, as they learn to work together and become one. And uh, if, if we don't learn how to do that, then the Lord says that we're not His. And so we really need to, to start thinking about that again, in my opinion. And uh, how, how, how we go about doing that, I'm not sure. But all I can do is stand in my own place. I'm the, the elders quorum secretary now, and so I will use my position to, to try to, to, to put out those ideas and that's all all we can do and that's all I can do and uh, and that's that's all I, I can think to say for now uh, so I, I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ Amen